the Golden Horde and the King of the Kipchaks. County Pest in Hungary, a small town near the Danube with a rather commanding name. The capital city of Little Kumania, a Hungarian town, Kiskunlatskaza. The city hall, right in the center of the town, is essentially a one-story mansion with only the notes on the notice board showing that it's an administrative building. Anyone can go in. A meeting is even interrupted to greet guests from Kazakhstan. Had to... Welcome to the land of Little Kumania. Our town is 700 years old and it has a rich history. The history of this town, like the rest of Hungary, is inextricably linked to the history of Kazakhstan. More than once did nomadic tribes migrate from the Sariaka steppes into the Hungarian wasteland. The Huns migrated some 1500 years ago, followed by the Magyars, who left northern Kazakhstan for Hungary 500 years later. In the 12th century, the Kipchaks, led by Khan Koten, arrived on the banks of the Danube, fleeing the Mongolian army. From the end of the 12th century to the early 13th century, the Kipchaks practically migrated to many countries in Asia and Europe. The Golden Horde's invasion of the West, the Polovtsian Law, a convoluted war campaign, betrayals, intrigues, and the story of how the Mongols unwittingly put the Kipchaks on the Hungarian throne. How did this incredible story come to pass? The political map of that time had changed. What was the King of Hungary accused of? Laszlo was under pressure from the Hungarian barons and the papal curia. How is the Hungarian wasteland linked to the steppe of the Golden Horde? He was friends with one of Nogai's commanders. Medieval chronicles of the Kipchaks in the Hungarian court, the Mongolian invasion of Europe, an heir of steppe blood, the campaign of Tulubuga and Nogai against the West, the Golden Horde and the King of the Kipchaks. Chapter 1. Little Kumania. An angelic house with a Gothic flair and the House of God, a reformed church. These sites are not as old as Kiskun Latskhaza. However, Little Kumania's capital has been here for more than a few centuries. The city was relocated because of the frequent floods in the Danube River. This is yet another place where guests are taken for a visit. Laszlo IV, also known as Ladislaus the Kuman. Legends of the Kipchak king are not only abundant here. Laszlo the Kuman preferred the white Khan yurt made of felt to the grim halls of stone castles. Instead of knightly jewels, he went hunting for foxes in the boundless Hungarian wasteland. The king's fellow tribesmen called him Lashin, the hawk. This place belonged to the representatives of the Arpad dynasty. Laszlo the Kuman visited this place regularly. Names that attest to this are still here, and legends about his stay are also here. He liked coming to this place. The son of the steppe and of royal blood. For a long time, it was believed that Laszlo's mother, the wife of Hungary's King Istvan, Stephen, was Koten Khan's daughter. In fact, this is not true. She was the daughter of a Polotsvian prince who came along with Koten from the Polotsvian steppe to Hungary. In 1239, he gathered 40,000 Kipchak families and 10,000 Alans and Ossetians who crossed the border into the Hungarian kingdom and sought political refuge. King Bela, the grandfather of Laszlo IV, eagerly welcomed the nomads. Ahead of the unavoidable threat of invasion from the Mongols, such military reinforcement was serendipitous. It was the greatest army one could wish for. That's why the most logical thing to do was to conscript them into one's own military and use them for one's own needs. 
However, not all the Hungarian barons agreed with their monarch's decision. Aristocrats attacked one of Pest's castles. One of the legends has it that a Polotsvian Khan lived there with his entourage. According to another legend, Koten was attending a meeting convened by King Bela. Our aristocracy imagined that he was a spy sent by the Mongols to conquer Hungary. That wasn't true, of course, but it led to some kind of a dispute. There was a conflict with local feudal lords who didn't like the fact that the Kipchaks had become close to the royal court. They killed Koten, and after that, part of his army organized a revolt and went to the Bulgarian kingdom. This was very shortly before Batu Khan's inroad into Europe. Eventually, Koten was killed, and tragic events unfolded. Nomads, aware of the Mongol army's tactics, reached Bulgaria. Hungary was ravaged by internal conflicts and feudal mutiny. As a result, King Bela IV's soldiers suffered a devastating defeat in one of the main battles. In this lengthy battle on the river Sajo, the Mongols managed to defeat the Hungarian army, resulting in the almost complete capture of Hungary by the Mongols. Pest is plundered. Military forces are closing in on Buda. In medieval times, this used to be a square where vendors sold fish. There was a fortification wall nearby. This place was an important fish market. A magnificent and beautiful facility was built a lot later, by the 1000th anniversary of independence. In the 1340s, this place was a smoldering ruin. Hungary had been seized. However, it is a curious historical fact that the kingdom didn't become part of the empire, which would later be called the Golden Horde. In early 1242, the Mongolian army were in a hurry to leave the land. The Mongols left because the great Khan Ogadai had died, and Batu Khan wanted to get back to Mongolia as soon as possible. He was rushing to get to a meeting, impatient to fight for power at home, which was much more important than the European conquests. All the more so because Batu Khan had already fought with Guyuk Khan, who was one of the candidates for the Mongolian throne. Therefore, quite legitimately, he was expecting a difficult time from his rival. That meeting changed the entire political map of the world at that time. In fact, there was a power struggle that lasted four years from 1242 to 1246. Politically, the most important change of the time in the Mongolian Empire was the foundation of the Kipchakia Khanate by Batu Khan, later known as the Golden Horde. George Vernadsky, the Mongols and Russia. All of this upheaval within Mongolia had a positive impact on Hungary. Europe had more time to prepare for further raids. King Bela was in no doubt whatsoever that there would be more of those. How did the Kipchaks return to Hungary? Who helped the young king? And why was he called the Kuman? Chapter 2 – A Kipchak on the Throne The middle of the 13th century White yurts, cauldrons full of meat, and sports competitions. Typical nomadic festivities, but in Eastern Europe. Most likely, it was similar to the day of the Kuns in Kunsag. The venue used to be full of craftspeople with their produce, similar to modern day tents with souvenirs. A celebration honoring the reconciliation of the Hungarians and the Kipchaks. After the Mongols left, King Bela IV greets his honored guests. To get the Polovtsians who had left for Bulgaria back, he held negotiations, and some of them returned to Hungary's Pest five years after Koten's death. King Bela gave them autonomy. 
meaning that Little Kumania and Greater Kumania were pretty much independent, and the Kuman Kipchaks lived freely there. The Concord was reconfirmed by the engagement of the Hungarian heir and a Kipchak princess. The daughter of one of Koten's associates, she would be the mother of the future king Laszlo. She was Sehan's daughter from the Chartan tribe. He was the Khan who brought the horde back to Hungary. So, as you can see, these were marriages of the highest level and between equal peoples. The bride at the time was just a baby. Nonetheless, the Polovetsian princess had been brought up in her native surroundings before the marriage. Later, when the couple were not yet teenagers and had just turned 12, they were married. Laszlo was born in 1262 and became a king when he was 10. The king's life was far from that of a typical child. Laszlo was kidnapped several times. At one time, even his own grandfather, King Bela IV, kept the boy hostage. At the age of eight, the Hungarian heir to the throne was married to an Anjouian princess. Two years later, the prince lost his parents and became a king shortly afterwards, although initially he was under the regency of his Polotsian mother. She was an influential woman and owned land in modern Bosnia and Croatia. At 15, the absolute monarch was officially deemed an adult. Beside him were his loyal Polotsians, a power base that all had to reckon with. In the very first military campaign, he earned fame by defeating the ruler of the Czechs. The king was very popular within the Hungarian court. The entire elite consisted of Kipchaks. Despite his young age, Laszlo IV took on the difficult task of consolidating his power. Some 150 years previously, the Georgian king David had also tried to do the same with the help of the nomads. This was necessary, first of all, to strengthen the kingdom through Kipchak military prowess, withstand external invasions from enemies and reduce infighting within the army. Whilst the Georgian strategy proved successful, in Hungary, a similar campaign led to a riot. Feudal lords were not prepared to give up their power. Accusations were made that the Hungarian king had supposedly left his wife for a Polotsian princess, become a pagan and joined the nomadic tribes. The Kipchaks were dependent on the king himself and through them Laszlo wanted to strengthen his power. This made the Hungarian barons unhappy. However, the Kipchaks' paganism was just an excuse to start a mutiny. Cunning plans, plots and blackmail were limited to the steppe. In his family residences, he was peaceful and happy. That was when the aristocracy began to call him Polotsian or Kun. They wanted to offend him, but he was proud of that name. Hungarian barons and the papal curia exerted pressure on Laszlo. The Pope was unhappy that the Kipchaks were continuing to adhere to their faith and customs in the Hungarian kingdom. Buda, 13th century. After the invasion of Batokan's troops, the Europeans were horrified, with all rulers fearing the return of military incursions this time from the Golden Horde. The Pope's envoy gathers a national assembly. The main issue on the agenda is the baptism of the Kipchaks into Catholicism and the adoption of the Polotsian laws. From now on, they will settle and leave their tents and dwellings made of felt. They will live and remain in villages similar to Christian ones, with houses and dwellings attached to the ground. Laszlo IV, medieval laws of the Kingdom of Hungary. The Kipchaks were no longer allowed to lead a nomadic life, take prisoners or steal cattle. They were not paid for their service, 
so had been living on whatever they could get during their military raids, and sometimes had to attack neighboring Hungarian settlements to feed their families. This was the main thing, along with religion, that was decided there. When the Kipchaks arrived, they kept migrating and living according to their own traditions, whereas according to the Polovtsian laws, they were supposed to become farmers. Under the new law, the Polovtsian princes received plots of land, became equal to Hungarian aristocracy, while the simple Kipchaks joined the ranks of soldiers and peasants. To comply with all the rules, inquisitors were assigned to each quarter. Among the only things that the nomads could retain were their traditional clothing, hairstyles, and the right of blood feud with reservations. The Kipchaks were used to moving around, and so they were angered by the king. They said, why should we nomads listen to the envoy of Rome? That was when the disagreements began because the Kipchaks wanted to live the way they had always done. The new law applied only nominally. The king was in no hurry to put it into practice, as he was aware of how the Kipchaks felt about it. However, the threat of excommunication did the trick. In 1279, Laszlo Kun was forced to accept the conditions that were dictated to him by the nobility. The fragile alliance had been broken, the Kipchaks revolted and riots began. It was as though the wheel of history had been turned back. How did the Polovtsian rebellion end? What was the relationship between the king and the commander of the Golden Horde? Why was Nogai accused of sabotage? Chapter 3 – A Dark Story it was either 1280 or, according to some sources, 1282. The battle on Lake Hod would influence the course of history. Laszlo Kun, at the head of the Hungarian feudal lords, acts against his kinsmen by pacifying the rebels. According to one version of events, the king was in captivity at that time, while the aristocrats brought the troops, concealing themselves under his banner. One way or another, the Kipchak rebellion was quickly and harshly suppressed. Many Polovtsians died, others left their wives, children and all their property and fled to the barbarian peoples. Shimon Kazai, Acts of the Huns and Hungarians. About 20,000 Polovtsians left once more to neighboring Bulgaria. At that time, the actual ruler of the Balkans was the Golden Horde's commander, Nogai. It is believed that representatives of two Kipchak clans fled, while the remaining five remained in Hungary. At that time, there were many Kipchak tribes in Bulgaria. Among those who left Hungary, there was a certain leader called Aldemir, who was either a descendant of Khan Koten and the younger brother of the Bulgarian king, or simply his namesake. The fact was that he was also of aristocratic blood. There were several powerful Kipchak Khans in Eastern Europe and it seems that it was precisely at Aldemir's behest that the future Khan of the Golden Horde, Tulubuga, decided to replicate the exploits of his great-grandfather Batu, in particular his campaign in the West. The Mongol conquest continued and began to come to a head. Tulubuga conspires with the commander Nogai, and then everything descends into complete confusion, particularly the chronology. Around 1282 to 1285, in Hungary itself, completely disillusioned, King Laszlo Kun abandons state affairs, returns to the defeated Kipchaks, and is reconciled with his relatives. He tried to adhere to the Kuman traditions, and therefore went down in history as Kun Laszlo. And again the story repeats itself. Like Khan Koten, Laszlo is accused of secret conspiracy with the Golden Horde. Allegedly, he invited the troops of Tulubuga and Nogai to Hungary. Allegations were made that they were even allies. 
They say that the commander called the young king his brother. It may be said that they became related according to the custom of the steppe. The Hungarian monarch brought two Nogai princesses and the best warriors to Laszlo's personal guard. He was friends with the commander Nogai, and in general, he pursued a policy to the benefit of the East. According to one account, Nogai sabotaged this campaign. It seems he attacked Hungary and then returned to his homeland. Other researchers believe that the enemy horde reached the heart of the kingdom, but that Laszlo Kun defended the capital city. This event again amplified the authority of the young king. The lessons of the first Western campaign did not go in vain. In Western Europe at that time, there were already a lot of fortresses and stone castles, so new efforts and novel approaches were needed. Exactly which version of events is correct is unknown. Either way, most researchers agree that Nogai was not eager to fight against Hungary. I don't know the details of the tactical operation. It's difficult now to talk about what happened then. Meanwhile, Tulabuga, alongside the princes of South Russia, was preparing to enter Transylvania via the Carpathians, but they lost their way. All the punishment of heaven fell upon the conqueror. This chaotic military expedition was reflected in the Hungarian chronicles and is even mentioned in Muslim historical texts. Here is how the Tulubuga campaign is described in the old Russian records. He walked for 30 days, wandering in the mountains, driven by the wrath of God, and there was a great famine among them, and countless numbers of his people died, cursed and lawless. Tulubuga ended the campaign and emerged from it confounded, with only his wife and an old mare for company. From the Ipatiev Chronicle. Tulubuga's failed campaign further consolidated the power of Nogai. Some time later, not only did he dispose of this Khan of the Golden Horde, but it is also said that he played a fateful role in the life of Laszlo Kun. Why is he referred to as cursed? How did the story of the Kuman King end? And what part did the commander of the Golden Horde play in all of this? Epilogue Between the Steppe and the Palace This 36-metre column with Hungarian leaders on its pedestal is another monument dedicated to the millennium of the conquest of the homeland. In Hero Square, one of the most important leaders is Arpad, the founder of the royal dynasty. The Arpad dynasty is widely connected with the Turkic relationship, and it is not by chance that it is called the Majar dynasty, which generally indicates the presence of the Turkic influence, the Turkic element in the development of its history. In the Middle Ages, this dynasty was called the House of the Holy Kings, but you won't find Laszlo Kun among the bronze statues of the Arpads. He was considered to be too controversial a figure in Hungarian history, unloved by his aristocrats and caring too much for his nomads. Maybe that's why he was called the Cursed, because his life was constantly torn between the palace and the steppe. He died at the hands of his relatives, the Kipchaks, According to one account, this was revenge for the Polovtsian laws. According to another, he was killed by order of one of the feudal lords. It has also been argued that the Pope disliked the headstrong king. And the last hypothesis is that Laszlo Kun was killed upon the order of the commander Nogai. It's uncertain whether we will ever know the actual truth. He was very young and died aged 28. He didn't leave any official heirs. As is written in one of the chronicles, Hungarians, did you think the damage would be slight? It will be great. You will see what you have lost. This was the last king of the main line of the Arpad dynasty. 
the monarch of Kipchak blood, 18 years on the Hungarian throne, a seat he had occupied since childhood. In an era of change, he had to contend with the emergence of the world's new superpower, the Golden Horde or Kipchakia, and all the time ruled the neighboring Hungary, which he tried to maintain and improve. Again, with the help of the Kipchaks, an incredible story about real historical events. 